Mr. President, if you're a student of history, the speech that you just heard is not a new speech. It is a speech that has been given repeatedly in this Senate chamber. It was back in the 1930s when a president named Franklin Delano Roosevelt had an idea. And the idea was radical at the time. Here was the radical idea. Shouldn't we allow people during the course of their work life to put a little money away and to invest for their retirement so that when they reach the age of 65, they will have a program called Social Security? That was considered a radical socialist idea, taking money from everyone to create a positive program to help retirees across America when they reach retirement age. It takes away our freedom, they said. We ought to be able to make our own choices in life. They resisted it, but fortunately they failed. And in their failure, allowed the creation of a Social Security program, which is the single most popular government program in America today. Over 95% of Americans count on Social Security to make sure that when they reach retirement, there's something there to take care of them. But that wasn't the end of the speech you just heard. It was repeated again in the 1960s because another Democratic president by the name of Lyndon Baines Johnson came up with a notion that perhaps if people are going to live a little longer and have Social Security, they should also be able to have affordable health care. So Lyndon Baines Johnson suggested the creation of Medicare. What did the critics say about Medicare? Socialism that you would collect money from people all across America just to provide for the benefits to those who are retired, that you would take away our freedom to make our own savings plans for our future by saying that we have to pay in to Medicare. It's an attack on our freedom, they said. It's a socialist idea, they said. Thank goodness they lost in that debate as well. What happened, of course, was the creation of a Medicare program and we can see what came about as a result of it. A dramatic increase in the number of hospitals in America and doctors in America. We started taking health care seriously when it came to senior citizens. And the proof in the pudding? Senior citizens started living longer and longer lives. They were healthier. They were independent. They were strong because of this so-called socialist program of Medicare. So if you listen this morning as the Republican leaders came to the floor and decried socialism again, well, what's their point now? Their point now is that they believe that if we take a national effort toward dealing with climate change and global warming, it's socialism. It takes away our freedom. Well, I would agree with them in this respect. If we do something as a nation sensible, a sensible approach that is moderate, constructive, and positive, it's going to change the future. It's going to take away the opportunity that some of us will have to leave a planet for our children that is uninhabitable. Does anyone doubt, does anyone doubt that we are dealing with some change in the climate that we face around this world? Does anyone doubt that the scientific evidence year after year after year about the increased temperature of this planet has had a negative impact on the world we live in. More extreme weather events than we've ever seen. Tornadoes in Taylorville, Illinois in December. Listen, I grew up in Illinois. I was awakened many times in summer to get down in the basement because there was a tornado warning. My parents were worried about it. It was part of growing up in the Midwest, part of growing up in Illinois. I don't recall ever going down in the basement around Christmas. It turns out the tornado season in Illinois and many other places is now becoming a year-round event and flooding and fires and flooding in the city of Miami. All of these things are evidence to me that something is going on and we have a scientific explanation. Greenhouse gas emissions are creating a different environment, warming our planet, changing our weather patterns. I've come to the floor repeatedly here over the last several years and asked one basic question. Can anyone name any major political party in the world today, any major political party in the world today that like the Republican Party of the United States denies climate change? I make that open challenge over and over again on the floor. 
Never had a Republican come say to me, no, there's another party somewhere that takes our position on the issue that climate change is a fallacy and a fiction. I will tell you, though, maybe I'm not supposed to repeat this, but one Republican senator, after I made that challenge over and over again, drew me aside in the elevator, looked in both directions and said, I think there's a political party in Australia that also denies climate change. That's as good as it gets. One more party somewhere halfway around the world. So when Senator Schumer, the Democratic leader, comes to the floor and challenges the Republican leader, Senator McConnell, with the basic questions, I believe we have the right to ask for an answer. To the Republicans, to my friend from South Dakota who just spoke, to Senator McConnell of Kentucky, first question, do you believe that there is such a thing as climate change and global warming? That's a pretty easy question. The scientists overwhelmingly believe it. I do too. The second question that Senator Schumer has posed to them, do you believe that our human activity has something to do with it? Well, the scientific evidence is overwhelming again. Once we got into the industrial age and started spewing all the smoke and chemicals into the air, things started warming up on this planet Earth. Earth. And the third question that Senator Schumer has posed to the Republicans is basically fundamental as well. What are you going to do about it? And the answer is obvious. For the five years the Republicans have been in control in the Senate, they have done nothing. Nothing. And now they have a president who has the United States as the only country in the world, the only nation on earth that has withdrawn from the Paris Accord that tried to create a global strategy to deal with climate change. The president is enthralled by the notion that climate change is a fallacy, a fiction, and so are the Senate Republicans. So any effort to address this is socialism. Any idea that we should come together as a nation and work toward a planet that our kids can live on is taking away our freedom. Well, we know better. Under President Obama, we started moving toward more fuel-efficient cars and trucks. A gallon of gas has given us more mileage because of government policy. Well, I guess it took away our freedom to buy gas guzzlers, but we can at least say we made a positive step forward and this administration is stepping backwards. And they're doing it for the fossil fuel industry, for oil and gas and coal interest. They're coming to the floor and trying to get us into a fight once again over socialism when we talk about government policies that would guide us in the right direction for the future.